Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Math 31 Calculus, Chapter 4, Extreme Values, Lesson 2, Maximum Minimum Values, Part 1. Now, today we're going to be illustrating by examples that a first derivative of zero is one possible condition for maximum or minimum to occur. We'll be explaining circumstances wherein maximum and minimum values occur when f prime of x is not zero. And we'll be explaining the difference between local maximum and minima and absolute maximum and minima in an interval. So, if we consider the polynomial function graphed on the restricted domain, close bracket, sorry, square bracket minus 6, comma, 4, close bracket, then extreme values may occur at the left or right endpoints or any point in the domain. Label all the local and absolute maximums or minimums on this restricted domain. So, a lot to unpack here. And notice the restricted domain from x is minus 6 to x is plus 4. So here I'm being deceitful. This graph, from the red part of the graph is what we're looking at, not the entire graph. Now, extreme values, maximums, and minimums. Now, let's do, let's do the easy ones. The absolute maximums and minimums is, well, the absolute maximum. I don't like maximums. The absolute maximum is the highest point on the graph. So where's the highest point on the graph? Right here. This is the absolute maximum. Absolute maximum. Now, where's the absolute minimum? That is the lowest point on the graph. Well, the absolute minimum is right here. Okay. Right. Now, okay. then we also here talked about sorry, extreme values, all local. That is, in this area, where is the maximum, where is the minimum? Well, there's a couple, of ob <clears throat> a couple of obvious ones here if you think about it. Here, we have a local maximum because we have a high point in the area or a hill. So this goes back to math 30-1, hills and valleys sort of thing. And we have a local minimum here. Now, if you want to get picky, and well, I should, once we get an absolute maximum, we look on both sides of it, because then we should have minimums. So you see this absolute value maximum here. We have a local minimum here. But what about the other side? If we have a peak in the middle, this becomes a local minimum. And the same thing, actually it's the same thing with every maximum or minimum. If we have a minimum, like here, then on either side we should have maximums. If we have a maximum here, then on either side we should have minimums. Should. So for this absolute minimum here, on both sides of it, we should have a maximum. Because by definition it's the bottom, so there has to be a top. And if you think about it, there should be a top on either side. So we have a local maximum there. Okay? So on a graph, can you pick out the maximums and the minimums? And notice on the restricted. Because if it wasn't restricted, it would keep on going in both directions, and then we do, those last local maximums and minimums wouldn't exist. Anyway, now, this leads up to Fermat's theorem. If f of x has a maximum or minimum at some point c, then f prime c equals 0 if the derivative exists. Okay, now, notice it's Fermat's theorem, not Fermat's law, because there's a couple of problems with it. The first thing is the reverse implication is not true. If f prime of c is 0, then there may or may not be an extreme value at x equals c. So, for example, for y equals x cubed, the derivative is y prime is 3x squared. Setting this equation gives us x equal to 0, but at x equals 0 we have a point of inflection rather than an extreme value. So y equals x cubed goes like this. Oh, you poopy head. Not that people are watching. Now, this is... Realize here... Well, actually, I should just show you. y prime looks like that. Notice on this side, okay, here the slope is positive. Here the slope is positive, in between it's zero. So on the original graph, 
y equals x cubed, we have an inflection point. Point of inflection. All right? Now the other problem is the theorem does not inform us about extreme values where the function is not differentiable. For example, y equals the absolute value of x. There's an absolute minimum at x equals 0. If you draw that graph, y equals x squared would look like this. And you realize that is an absolute value, an absolute minimum. But the derivative can't be found at this corner, so Fermat's theorem doesn't help us. All right? So we have to be careful here. Anyway, let's just do some examples. So find the extreme values of the following functions in the given intervals. So for this first function here, the equation is y equals 1 minus x squared, where its absolute value, sorry, it goes from 0, it's less than or equal to x, is less than 1. Now, here we can use Fermat's theorem to find a maximum value if, actually, no, let's stop that for a moment. Let's just look at the graph. Here, look at the graph, where's the maximum? Oh, we have an absolute maximum. Because that's absolutely the highest point of the graph, is right there. Now, what's the coordinate for that? Um, well, that's x equals 0. Now, plugging that in the equation, that is y equals 1, or 0 comma 1 is our maximum. Okay, now, the trick is, what's the minimum? Now, that's trick because where does it end? It doesn't. There's no absolute minimum. Because this is x going to 1, but not x equaling 1. So it gets closer and closer and closer and closer to 0, but it doesn't reach 0. So technically, it doesn't have a minimum. We can talk about the limit, but not a minimum. Now, here's another graph. Where are our absolute maximums and absolute minimums? Well, the trouble is this graph keeps on going, so there's no absolute maximum. Now, is there a low point that's the lowest for the entire graph? Yes, right here. Now, remember I said, sorry, I'll just stop for a sec there. That's the absolute lowest part of the graph, because this stops now. And the other side keeps on going. Now, remember when I said there's a minimum? On either side, there should be a maximum. Well, here, at minus 1, 2, we have a local max. Most local. Now, careful. On the right side of it, this goes on forever, so there's no local maximum on the right. All right. And finally, once we have a local maximum, that means we should have a minimum on either side. Well, we've got the, minim the absolute minimum here, but on this side, we have a local minimum at x equals minus the square root of 3. All right. So we've got a local minimum, we've got a local maximum, we have an absolute minimum, but no absolute maximum because it keeps on going. All right. All right. Now, I'm going to pause the recording here. We'll go on and uh, do the next set of example questions in the next video. Any questions, shoot me an email, otherwise, good luck.